there is no secret that the Galaxy Note 20 looks pretty bad next to the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. But what could be even worse for this plasticky premium price Note 20 is that even the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition will blow it away. The Galaxy S20 Fan Edition will employ same 120Hz AMOLED panel as the S20 Plus, meaning it will be better than the Note 20. You all probably know by now that Note 20 doesn't even have that smoothness. It is just a 60Hz display. How much the S20 Fan Edition will cost? The S20 Fan Edition could hit the shelves in October for around $750. Meanwhile, the Note 20 cost $990. So you would essentially be paying more for less if you choose the Galaxy Note 20, of course. The Galaxy S20 Fan Edition is expected to have 6GB of RAM. The shortcuts taken by the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition won't change the fact that the Note 20 still looks a poor value for money device compared to the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition, even. Until now, it was rumored that the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition will feature a Snapdragon 865 processor. Now, a phone with model number SMG780F has appeared in the Geekbench database with Exynos 990 processor. This is the global variant of the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition and might not feature 5G connectivity. This listing also reveals that the phone will feature 8GB of RAM and Android 10. The phone is expected to feature 128GB of internal storage, a microSD card slot, and a 12 megapixel main camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide camera from the S20 Plus, and an 8 megapixel 3x telephoto camera. In the front, there will be a 32 megapixel selfie camera. The Galaxy S20 Fan Edition is also rumored to feature an IP68 rating for dust and water resistance, and a 4500 mAh battery with 45 watt fast charging. This phone could be available in five colors blue, green, orange, red, and white. Now, before moving on to another big news, please subscribe to this channel and like this video. I appreciate that. As 2021 approaches, the mobile SOC market is again hitting up with 5NM as its next big revolution. Samsung is a huge company, but it lacks the skills in making power-packed mobile SOCs, where Qualcomm, its biggest rival or also partners in various countries, has been delivering powerful mobile SOCs for quite a long time now. Samsung has a good chance to bounce back as Huawei's flagship chipset manufacturing will be stopped due to US pressure. You can watch my previous episode to know more. It has to counter the Snapdragon 875 and make it cheap good enough to entice the customer away from Apple's killer A14 Bionic. A new report from Business Korea says Samsung will be using ARM's new Cortex-X architecture, the same that will be used by the Qualcomm as well on their new Snapdragon 875G. This can deliver up to 30% increase in performance compared to the previous Cortex-A cores. There has been a lot of rumors about the upcoming Exynos 1000 chipsets too. So, what we know about the Exynos 1000? The 5NM based Exynos 1000 chip is rumored to feature the ARM's latest Cortex X1 high performance core and three Cortex A78 cores along with four standard Cortex A55 cores. If graphics are to be considered, AMD's RDNA graphics should deliver better graphics any day than Qualcomm's Adreno GPU for sure, as AMD has a good record in making great embedded graphics for APUs and consoles. In 2021, this battle will be an interesting one to look at. Snapdragon 875 versus Exynos 1000, and not to forget Huawei's last Kirin 1020 chip and Apple's A14 Bionic. Now the interesting part is, also Google will join the game with its upcoming in-house chip for the first time in 2021. That makes it more exciting for me. You can watch my previous episode to know more. Anyway, if you like this episode and quality presentation, please hit the like button, please do subscribe or watch my other videos. Bye and take care.